Good evening, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Um, before we get started, I did want to mention one thing. Um, uh, our homecoming celebration is uh, will be held November the 1st. Um, there will be more information following in the next couple of weeks, so stay tuned for that. Before we get started, I do want to uh, have a word of prayer, and then we'll dive right into our study this evening. Gracious God, we thank you for another day of life, Lord. I thank you for all the many blessings you've bestowed upon us. I pray that you just continue to watch over us, watch over our church. Lord, for those that, that have sicknesses and, and unspoken requests, Lord, I pray that you just touch them, lay your hands upon them. Lord, I pray that you just continue to watch over us, forgive us where we fail you, and all these things we ask in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Well, this evening, I wanted to talk about um, uh, the word courage. Um in preparing for my Sunday school lesson uh, this past week, I came across an article from uh, a com compelling truth article uh, dealing with courage. And so the definition of courage, one of the Hebrew words uh, translated courage uh, means to show oneself strong. Um, the Bible is filled with many stories uh, of courage. Some of those examples are how Moses showed tremendous courage uh, when he confronted Pharaoh uh, of Egypt and commanded him to let God's people go. Um, also, when Joshua, excuse me, when Joshua uh, conquered Canaan, uh, David also fell uh, the giant Philistine, uh, Goliath. So the Bible has many, many examples of people showing tremendous courage. And the basis for our courage um is the promise of God's presence, his power, uh, perseverance uh, with those who put their faith in him. Um, in Deuteronomy 31, uh, 7 and 8, it says, Then Moses called Joshua, said to him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and of good courage, for you must go with this people to the land which the Lord has swore to their fathers to give them, and you shall cause them to inherit it. And the Lord, he is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear nor be dismayed. Another example is found uh, in First Chronicles 28, uh, verse 20. Um, it's David's encouragement to Solomon. Again, that's 1 Chronicles 28, 20. And David said to his son Solomon, Be strong and of good courage, and do, and do it. Do not fear, nor be dismayed, for the Lord God, my God, will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you until you have finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. Now, Jesus himself was probably the greatest example of living a life of, of courage. Uh, when the seas were raging um, and he calms the storms, um, another form of courage being tempted in the desert uh, continuously uh, by Satan uh, and having the, the courage to reject those things um, and showing unbelievable courage uh, when praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, knowing what's about to happen. And then obviously the most courageous um, is him overcoming sin and death by sacrificing himself on the cross and rose from the dead. We too can live courageous lives by believing in him and walking in that spirit. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. When we're trusting and walking in the Spirit, um, the courage, we're given encouragement and hope. Um, Romans 8, 35 through 39. I'll turn to there real quickly. That's Romans 8, 35 through 39. It says, 
Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, For your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, I read several different passages um, of Scripture from several different walks of life of characters, uh, I say characters, from uh, great men of the Bible. Now, David facing a giant. Um, in life, especially, you know, when you're dealing with uh, sicknesses or, you know, death or a of a family member or just daily trials, um, these, these are giants in our lives. You, you too can live a courageous life by walking in the Spirit. Um, and with that hope, with that hope every day, following Jesus, walking in His light, that will get you through. That will help you to follow the giant. Um, the results may not always be what we, we anticipate them being. But as the Scripture said, God has already gone ahead of us. Jesus has already walked that path. So the thing we can face tomorrow with great hope. Use that hope and be encouraged. Remember who holds you in his hands. Revelations 1.8 I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. I leave you with this. The creator of the universe, who created all things, is the source of all hope. And he knows the hair, every hair on your head. That you can have hope in and you can live a courageous life. Amen.